Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Skyrim. As you may remember, we left off as a frost dragon was swooping down over us. So, let's get started. For dragons, I like to go ahead and use my best arrows. So I'm holding some glass, which I'll use on him to start off with. Frost dragons are great because, well, they always use frost. There's zero chance of them using fire breath, <clears throat> which is good news for us. I have a hefty supply of dwarven arrows with which we can also shoot at him. Oh, I'm still sneaking. No wonder I'm moving so slow. But our ideal, of course, is that he decides to land. <laughs> Well, he killed the snooty Salonia Carne. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, after calling us Skyrim trash, that one deserved it. But let's not lose track of her body. We can really add to her degradation by giving her the treatment. <clears throat> Sorry about that hiccup. I was given a truly unceremonious boot to desktop. But it doesn't matter. As you can see, he's going down quickly. Frost dragons are pretty weak. They're rank three. It goes dragon, blood dragon, and elder dragon are all the ones we had seen before. Looks like he decided he'd rather fight some mud crabs. It's hard to blame him for that. Considering that me and all the guards are messing up his day pretty badly. Of course, now we have <coughs> three corpses to keep track of. Two mud crabs over there, and mean, mean Salonia Carvane. And he's down. Let's go over there and finish him off. It shouldn't be too hard at all. gave us a kill cam we couldn't really see because it cut to behind him. But that's not a big deal. Now I have all the dragon bones I need, and dragon bones are not useful for smithing, because the only way they become useful is if you have the dragon armor perk, at which point you have a hundred smithing anyway. So I will just be selling dragon bones. However, I do still need dragon scales, specifically 28 of them. So, with these three in hand, that number drops to 25. Neat. Let's heal up. And go have fun with corpses. I, of course, would have preferred to kill those by trap myself and soul trap them, but it's alright. There will be other opportunities. Souls. Where'd Salonia Carvane land? There she is. Steel dagger, fine clothes, and fine boots. I will wager she's about level one. Oh, an elk. Can't let can't let this opportunity escape us. We're not gonna get the sneak bonus here, so what the hell? Let's Go ahead and get a glass arrow going on. Oh, you're so done. Archery to 28. Beautiful. <clears throat> At first I was thinking to myself, damn, I could have soul trapped the elk. But then I remembered soul trap is a touch spell and has no range. So that would be pretty hard to pull off. Alright. Damn it, I lost track of Salonia again. There she is. Still no sign of her husband. This is supposed to be part of that encounter. But it's alright. 
Maybe we'll run into him farther up the road. Who knows? Oh, hey. Better than I thought. Where's she going? Get back here. There's nothing over here. I don't know where you think you're going. Nice. Okay. Let's go visit those two mud crabs that the dragon eliminated for us and do the same thing to them. I think it's just guards that are seeing me. I'm looking for the husband, the other half of that encounter, but there's no sign know of him. Your kind. Always sneaking no about. sign of him. Not them. So there's your rank 3 dragon. He's pretty weak. As you saw, the elder dragon was pretty tough. The rank 4 is where things get hairy. And, as you may know, in the base game there are only 5 ranks of dragon. Elder is the second strongest in the base game. One rank higher, which we still haven't seen, although we're at the level where we could, is Ancient. Ancient dragons show up from level 45 forward. With Dawnguard installed, <coughs> it is my duty to inform you that there are two ranks of dragon above Ancient. There are Revered Dragons, which will begin appearing at level 66, so we still aren't high enough for that. And there are Legendary Dragons, which begin appearing at level 78. We aren't strong enough for them either. We could, but we've run, now run into every dragon between rank 1 and 4. Which, I don't know, I think it's kind of neat. We're strong enough for 5, although we haven't hit it yet. And we are not yet strong enough for 6 and 7. Can I hit that deer from way out here? I'm gonna try. I'll need to get closer, just, just purely just to line up the shot, I think. I'd like to hit him from back here. So I think I can get a sneak attack. Oh, hello. I can certainly get it on that one. There's a deer. Come on. Get the other one. Well, it landed close enough to him that he started running. I can't tell where it's landing because it's so far away. I think I'm actually overshooting. Hard to know for sure. Anyway, let's soul trap this and kill this crab. Loot him and we'll reanimate him as time permits. Which is to say, not yet. <coughs> There's... There are two more. There's a elk and a deer, and I am having real trouble connecting with either. I guess I'm just too far away. Let's get a little closer. I can line up the shot a bit better. I led him... I led that one too far, actually. There. Where'd the other big antlered one go? Couldn't have gone that far. Now let's give the treatment to one of these crabs and then we'll go after that third deer. Oh, mud crabs have petty souls and indeed... Did that one fill properly this time? No, I'm still getting my glitch. That's trouble. Make no mistake. I can tell it didn't fill properly because the value didn't go up. Oh, 
build petty soul gem is supposed to be worth 40 gold, an empty one is worth 10. So even though it's reporting that it's full, it's listed at 10 gold. Which makes me think it's still going to be subject to the glitch. So I just need to keep track of how many soul gems I ultimately have. Alright. Now well, let's... While we wait for our magic to recharge, let's go loot the two we have killed and keep our eyes open for the third one. Large antlers. Terrific. I only need four more now. And the little one go. There's the other big one. We can, should be able to drop him from here, I think. There we go. Yes, get the bow out. How many times do I have to click before you'll do it? Let's get a full draw on that arrow. And that was actually a little short, so let's aim higher. That one, I think, went over him. Aim too high. What is going on? Alright, let's try to approach without triggering a run, of course. Well, there's our Tundra Cotton. And I can shoot from here. I don't know what happened there. Let's get even a little closer. There we go. We're not getting a sneak attack, so an iron arrow won't cut it. How about steel? Will that work? Let's find out. Oh. Well, and then it gave me the sneak attack. Of course that works. Good. Okay. Got all the... Managed to kill all the animals I was trying to kill. Um, another large antler from him. That's great. Now I only need three more. Saw some bugs over here. There they are. Mon one monarch and two blues. I need to find the small elk I killed. Or small antlered elk. I don't know if the body is also smaller or not. I have not performed the requisite measurements. But... I know there's another dead elk somewhere around here. I need to find it. And I need to loot it. There it is. Last, need to resurrect that third mud crab. <clears throat> and I was actually just thinking to myself that even if I can't get conjuration experience, I could still get some sneak attacks in on non-hostile critters like the elk I've just been slaughtering. What I'd really like, what I'd really, really like is for sneak and conjuration to get to a hundred just so I can stop doing this completely. That'll happen pretty soon for sneak. Conjuration is still a ways away. Waiting on the Magicka to refill. And now we will just go after as many sneak attacks as we can get. Of course, that number might be zero. Maybe that's why I decided it just wasn't worth raising these things. He seems hyper aware of me. 
Let me look at my conjuration experience. Never turns hostile, never runs, and can't get sneak attacks. Okay, my original conclusion that it was totally useless to raise those things was correct. Not a tick of conjuration XP, impossible to get a sneak attack. So, let's head to the main road. <clears throat> we are closing in on Fort Greymoor. I think it's our first full-size military fort. So let me talk briefly about these. If you haven't started the Civil War quest line, which we haven't, these will typically be staffed with bandits, as this one is now. Then, after you clear out the bandits, or if you don't clear it out before starting the Civil War, and then, you know, you start the Civil War, the whichever side controls the hold the fort is in will staff the fort with soldiers, and the layout will change. So, a true completionist may need to clear each military fort as many as three times, depending on who you side with in the Civil War, and which side initially controls it after you liberate it from bandits. Whiterun, although for story purposes it's still neutral, in terms of those systems, the game behaves as if White Run were controlled by Imperials. So if we clear the bandits out, the next time we come back, after it's had time to respawn, which takes ten days, if I remember right, it'll be staffed with Imperials, and the layout will have changed. And it'll be worth clearing again. For now, Fort Greymore is staffed with bandits, they're always hostile, so clearing it is a pretty straightforward affair. I just wanted to go back to the watchtower and make sure I had covered the whole road. Which is why we wandered back here. Now check out this washed out, or burned out, abandoned home over here. If you have the official plug-in Fall of the Space Corps installed, this is where the Space Corps lands. I kind of ignore that because it's obviously a joke. There's a chest under the floorboards. There's never much in it. Just found five gold. Uh, we can snag some lavender here. I think I'm about finished off-roading. And I'm ready to approach the fort. So as you can see, the fort's seen better days. A lot of the stonework has collapsed and has been replaced with a wooden palisade. You'll see that a lot around Skyrim. The whole province has seen better days, to tell the truth. But, that doesn't matter. Still got goodies inside. That's all it takes to please me. So here's the front entrance. You can see extra wooden palisades, and there Fort Greymoor is off the location list. Although you can find it, and there are hostels inside, typically military forts aren't clearable. There are a couple of exceptions that are clearable for whatever reason, but Fort Greymoor is not one of those exceptions. So I'm gonna hold off casting Mage Light now, and I'm kinda gonna steer clear the entrance until I'm actually ready to aggravate the bandits. As you can see, that's the front entrance, walled off with all those neat spiked wooden fences, archers patrolling the walls. Let's head... Whoa, hello. What do we have here? Talsgar the Wanderer. I'm not sure if we've run into him already or not. Let me check. Here's another bandit encounter... or er, random <laughs> encounter. No, we haven't met him yet. This one is Bard Traveling on the Road. So... Let's visit him, Talsgar the Wanderer. Well, he's got some good stuff. Ingredients, books we've already read, potions, 
and a couple of books we haven't read. Fellow traveler, one itinerant minstrel and wandering wastrel at your service. So we got the books, The Wolf Queen V3 and The Black Arrow V1, neither of which we've read, but let's talk to Talsgar first. Ah, smell that fresh air? Truly, this is a good place to play a song. Hello there, friend. A lucky for you to chance upon a bard on the road. The life of adventure and song is the life for us, eh, friend? Ah. Smell that fresh air? Truly, <coughs> this is a good place to play a song. Well, I have some kind of glitch going on over there that I'll need to check out, but for now, you can pay 25 gold and he'll play you a song. Let's just get his other dialogue. Can you teach me about speechcraft? Ah, well, after a little incident with a roguish lad and uh, the daughter of a prominent thane, well, let's just say best not. Afraid not. But if you're serious about sharpening that tongue, you might try the Bard's College in solitude. What are you doing out here? Why, to perform for my common man, of course. Why should only the courts and inns of wealthy towns be given the gift of music? You can ask again. What are you doing out here? The best tales are those of adventure. Who could truly write such a tale? without first experiencing such. And again, what are you doing out here? Some may find their inspiration tucked away in tones, or by carousing in the cities, but I find it here, in the vast expanses of Skyrim. All right, fair enough. Mm-hmm. Right, let me go see what this glitch is, because I think it's the dragon skeleton being blasted in or out of the sky or something. I'm not sure and it's worrisome to me, <laughs> to say the least. What is going on here? Oh hey, that iron ore has respawned. I might as well mine that. Maybe this was just meant to lead me over here. I can't tell what this is. It's something that didn't render properly, I suppose. But hey, if that iron ore has respawned, be foolish not to get it. I wonder if both veins have respawned, or it's just this one. I bet they both have. Which will be handy. I'm hoping for one of the gems I still need. But the superlative smithing experience that comes with an emerald is just as well. Now look here, you can see the, um, the caravan on the move. Rissad and his folks are traveling from Whiterun to Markarth. What's this guy doing? The Legion's always looking for strong, capable warriors. If you think you've got what it takes, our headquarters are in solitude. Damn storm. Rebels. One lone Imperial soldier. Is that on my list? Let me see what he might be. I think he's supposed to be part of a different encounter. Might be... It's weird that he's by himself, because they're usually in a group of three. But I'm going to say that is the random encounter, Imperials on the Road. As there's no Stormcloak prisoner around, and he didn't make mention of scouting or anything like that. He just had generic soldier's dialogue. <coughs> so I got me some nighttime bugs there. I can actually offload a little bit. Forge. Take a look. We can sell things to Rissad. How about that? Go ahead and take some of this stuff off my hands, please. All the food, the worthless stuff. 
And I'll sell him the dragon bone, because I think I already mentioned why that's just vendable for me. But everything else I'm carrying is useful. So, now, I want to circle the fort and make sure I've got everything cleared out. But before I do that, before I forget to, the two other books we have. The Black Arrow V1. The Black Arrow Part 1 by Gorgic Gwine. I was young when the Duchess of Woda hired me as an assistant footman at her summer palace. My experience with the ways of the titled aristocracy was very limited before that day. There were wealthy merchants, traders, diplomats, and officials who had large operations in Elden Root, and ostentatious palaces for entertaining, but my relatives were all far from those social circles. There was no family business for me to enter when I reached adulthood, but my cousin heard that an estate far from the city required servants. It was so remotely located that there were unlikely to be many applicants for the positions. I walked for five days into the jungles of Valenwood before I met a group of riders going my direction. They were three Bosmer men, one Bosmer woman, two Breton women, and a Dunmer man, adventurers from the look of them. Are you also going to Maliva? asked Prolissa, one of the Breton women, after we had made our introductions. I don't know what that is, I replied. I'm seeking a domestic position with the Duchess of Woda. <coughs> we'll take you to her gate, said the Dunmer Misunakin, pulling me up to his horse. But you would be wise not to tell her grace that students from Maliva escorted you, not unless you don't really want the position in her service. Akin explained himself as we rode on. Maliva was the closest village to the Duchess's estate, where a great and renowned archer had retired after a long life of military service. His name was Yomaste, and though he was retired, he had begun to accept students who wished to learn the art of the bow. In time, when word spread of the great teacher, more and more students arrived to learn from the master. The Breton women had come down all the way from the western reach of High Rock. Akin himself had journeyed across the continent from his home near the great volcano in Morrowind. He showed me the ebony arrows he had brought from his homeland. I had never seen anything so black. From what we've heard, said Kopali, one of the Bosmer men, the Duchess is an Imperial whose family has been here even before the Empire was formed, so you might think that she was accustomed to the common people of Valenwood. <coughs> Nothing could be further from the truth. She despises the village and the school most of all. I suppose she wants to control all the traffic in her jungle, laughed Prolissa. I accepted the information with gratitude and found myself dreading more and more my first meeting with the intolerant Duchess. My first sight of the palace through the trees did nothing to assuage my fears. It was nothing like any building I had ever seen in Valenwood, a vast edifice of stone and iron with a jagged row of battlements like the jaws of a great beast. Most of the trees near the palace had been hewn away long ago. I could only imagine the scandal that must have caused, and what fear the Bosmer peasants must have had of the Duke of Woda to have allowed it. In their stead was a wide gray-green moat circling in a ring around the palace, so it seemed to be on a perfect if artificial island. I had seen such sights in tapestries from High Rock and the Imperial Province, but never in my homeland. There will be a guard at the gate, so we'll leave you here, said Akin, stopping his horse in the road. It'd be best for you if you weren't damned by association with us. I thanked my companions and wished them good luck with their schooling. They rode on and I followed on foot. In a few minutes' time, I was at the front gate, which I noticed was linked to tall and ornate railings to keep the compound secure. When the gatekeeper understood that I was there to inquire about a domestic position, he allowed me past and signaled to another guard across the open lawn to extend the drawbridge and allow me to cross the moat. There was one last security measure, the front door. An iron monstrosity with the Woda coat of arms across the top, reinforced by more strips of iron and a single golden keyhole. The man standing guard unlocked the door and gave me passage into the huge, gloomy, gray stone palace. Her grace greeted me in her drawing room. She was thin and wrinkled like a reptile, cloaked in a simple red gown. It was obvious that she never smiled. Our interview consisted of a single question. Do you know anything about being a junior footman in the employment of an imperial noblewoman? Her voice was like ancient leather. No, your grace. Good. No servant ever understands what needs to be done, and I particularly dislike those who think they do. You're engaged. 
Life at the palace was joyless, but the position of junior footman was very undemanding. I had nothing to do on most days except to stay out of the Duchess's sight. At such times, I usually walked two miles down the road to Moliva. In some ways, there was nothing special or unusual about the village. There are thousands of identical places in Valenwood. But on the hillside nearby was Master Hilmaste's Archery Academy, and I would often take my luncheon and watch the practice. Prolissa and Akin would sometimes meet me afterwards. With Akin, the subjects of conversation very seldom strayed far from archery. Though I was very fond of him, I found Prolissa a more enchanting companion, not only because she was pretty for a Breton, but also because she seemed to have interests outside the realm of marksmanship. There's a circus in High Rock I saw when I was a little girl called the Quill Circus, she said during one of our walks through the woods. <coughs> They've been around for as long as anyone can remember. You have to see them if you ever can. They have plays and sideshows and the most amazing acrobats and archers you've ever seen. That's my dream, to join them someday when I'm good enough. How will you know when you're a good enough archer, I asked. She didn't answer, and when I turned, I realized that she had disappeared. I looked around, bewildered, until I heard laughter from the tree above me. She was perched on a branch, grinning. I may not join as an archer. Maybe I'll join as an acrobat, she said. Or maybe as both. I figured that Valenwood would be the place to go to see what I could learn. You've got all those great teachers to, imitra to imitate in the trees here, those ape men. <coughs> she coiled up, bracing her left leg before springing forward on her right. In a second, she had leapt across to a neighboring branch. I found it difficult to keep talking to her. The Imga, you mean? I stammered. Aren't you nervous up at that height? It's a cliché, I know, she said, jumping to an even higher branch. But the secret is not to ever look down. Would you mind coming down? I probably should, anyhow, she said. She was a good thirty feet up now, balancing herself, arms outstretched, on a very narrow branch. She gestured toward the gate just barely visible on the other side of the road. This tree is actually as close as I want to get to your duchess's palace. I held back a gasp as she dove off the branch, somersaulting until she landed on the ground, knees slightly bent. That was the trick, she explained, anticipating the blow before it happened. I expressed to her my confidence that she would be a great attraction at the Quill Circus. Of course, I know now that, was ne that never was to be. On that day, as I recall, I had to return early. It was one of the rare occasions when I had work of a sort to do. Whenever the Duchess had guests, I was to be at the palace. That is not to say that I had any particular duties, except to be seen standing at attention in the dining room. The stewards and maids worked hard to bring in the food and clear the plates afterwards, but the footmen were purely decorative, a formality. But at least I was an audience for the drama to come. And <coughs> you remember the Black Arrow V2, I'm sure. The Wolf Queen V3. The Wolf Queen Book 3 by Wagen Jarth. From the pen of the first century third era sage Montekai, third era 98. The Emperor Pelagius Septim II died a few weeks before the end of the year, on the 15th of Evening Star, during the Festival of North Wind's Prayer, which was considered a bad omen for the Empire. He had ruled over a difficult 17 years. In order to fill the bankrupt treasury, Pelagius had dismissed the Elder Council, forcing them to buy back their positions. Several good but poor counselors had been lost. Many say the Emperor had died as a result of being poisoned by a vengeful former council member. His children came to attend his funeral and the coronation of the next Emperor. His youngest son, Prince Magnus, 19 years of age, arrived from Almalexia, where he had been a counselor to the royal court. 21-year-old Prince Sepphoris arrived from Gilane with his Red Guard bride, Prince Bianchi, Queen Bianchi. Prince Antiochus, at 43 years of age, the eldest child and heir presumptive, had been with his father in the imperial city. The last to appear was his only daughter, Potema, the so-called Wolf Queen of Solitude. Thirty years old and radiantly beautiful, she arrived with a magnificent entourage accompanied by her husband, the elderly King Mantiarcho, and her year-old son, Uriel. Paul expected Antiochus to assume the throne of the empire, but no one knew what to expect from the Wolf Queen. <coughs> Third Era 99 Lord Vakken has been bringing several men to your sister's chambers late at night every night this week, offered the spymaster. Perhaps if her husband were made aware... 
My sister as a devotee of the conqueror gods wrote Remen and Talos, not the love goddess Dibella. She is plotting with those men, not having orgies with them. I'd wager I've slept with more men than she has, laughed Antiochus, and then grew serious. <clears throat> She's behind the delay of the council offering me the crown, I know it. Six weeks now. They say they need to update records and prepare for the coronation. I'm the emperor. Crown me into oblivion with the formalities. Your sister is surely no friend of yours, your majesty, but there are other factors at play. Do not forget how your father treated the council. It is they who need following, and if need be, strong convincing, the spymaster added, with a suggestive stab of his dagger. Do so, but keep your eye on the damnable wolf queen as well. You know where to find me. At which brothel, your highness? inquired the spymaster. Today being Freitas, I'll be at the Cat and Goblin. The spymaster noted in his report that night that Queen Potema had no visitors, for she was dining across the imperial garden at the Blue Palace with her mother, the Dowager Empress Quintilla. It was a warm night for wintertide, and surprisingly cloudless, though the day had been stormy. The saturated ground could not take any more, so the formal, structured gardens looked as if they had been glazed with water. The two women took their wine to the wide balcony to look over the grounds. I believe you are trying to sabotage your half-brother's coronation, said Quintilla, not looking at her daughter. Potema saw how the years had not so much wrinkled her mother as faded her, like the sun on a stone. It's not true, said Potema. But would it bother you very much if it were true? Antiochus is not my son. He was eleven years old when I married your father, and we've never been close. I think that being heir presumptive has stunted his growth. He is old enough to have a family with grown children, and yet he spends all his time at debauchery and fornication. He will not make a very good emperor, Quintilla sighed, and then turned to Potema. But it is bad for the family for seeds of discontent to be sown. It is easy to divide up into factions, but very difficult to unite again. I fear for the future of the empire. Those sound like the words, Are you by any chance dying, mother? I've read the omens, said Quintilla with a faint, ironic smile. Don't forget, I was a renowned sorceress in Camlorn. I will be dead in a few months' time, and then, not a year later, your husband will die. I only regret that I will not live to see your child Uriel assume the throne of solitude. Have you seen whether... Potema stopped, not wanting to reveal too many of her plans, even to a dying woman. <coughs> whether he will be emperor? Aye, I know the answer to that, too. Daughter, don't fear. You'll live to see the answer, one way or the other. I have a gift for him when he is of age. The Dowager Empress removed a necklace with a single great yellow gem from around her neck. It's a soul gem infused with the spirit of a great werewolf your father and I defeated in battle thirty-six years ago. I've enchanted it with spells from the School of Illusion, so its wearer may charm whoever he chooses. An important skill for a king. And an emperor, said Potema, taking the necklace. Thank you, mother. An hour later, <coughs> passing the black branches of the sculpted duad shrubs, Potema noticed a dark figure which vanished into the shadows under the eaves at her approach. She had noticed people following her before. It was one of the hazards of life in the imperial court. <coughs> Excuse me. But this man was too close to her chambers. She slipped the necklace around her neck. Come out where I can see you, she commanded. The man emerged from the shadows, a dark little fellow of middle age dressed in black-dyed goatskin. His eyes were fixed, frozen, under her spell. Who do you work for? Prince Antiochus is my master, he said in a dead voice. I am his spy. A plan formed. Is the prince in his study? No, milady. And you have access? Yes, milady. Potema smiled widely. She had him. Lead the way. The next morning, the storm reappeared in all its fury. The pelting on the walls and ceiling was agony to Antiochus, who was discovering that he no longer had his youthful immunity to a late night of hard drinking. He shoved hard against the Argonian wench, sharing his bed. Make yourself useful and close the window, he moaned. No sooner had the window been bolted than there was a knock at the door. It was the spymaster. He smiled at the prince and handed him a sheet of paper. What is this? said Antiochus, squinting his eyes. I must still be drunk. It looks like orcish. I think you will find it useful, your majesty. Your sister is here to see you. Antiochus considered getting dressed or sending his bedmate out, but thought better of it. Show her in. Let her be scandalized. If Potema was scandalized, she did not show it. 
Swathed in orange and silver silk, she entered the room with a triumphant smile, followed by the man-mountain Lord Vakin. Dear brother, I spoke to my mother last night, and she advised me very wisely. She said I should not battle with you in public, for the good of our family and the Empire. Therefore, she said, producing from the folds of her robe a piece of paper, I am offering you a choice. A choice, said Antiochus, returning her smile. That does sound friendly. <coughs> Abdicate your rights to the imperial throne voluntarily, and there is no need for me to show the council this, Potema said, handing her brother the letter. It is a letter with your seal on it, stating that you knew that your father was not Pelagius Septim II, but the royal steward Fondukh. Now, before you deny writing the letter, you cannot deny the rumors, nor that the imperial council will believe that your father, the old fool, was quite capable of being cuckolded. Whether it's true or not, or whether the letter is a forgery or not, the scandal of it would ruin your chances of being the emperor. Antiochus's face had gone white with fury. Don't fear, brother, said Potema, taking back the letter from his shaking hands. I will see to it that you have a very comfortable life, and all the whores your heart or any other organ desires. Suddenly Antiochus laughed. He looked over at his spy master and winked. I remember when you broke into my stash of Khajiit erotica and blackmailed me. That was close to twenty years ago. We've got better locks now, you must have noticed. It must have killed you that you couldn't use your own skills to get what you wanted. Potema merely smiled. It didn't matter. She had him. You must have charmed my servant here into getting you into my study to use my seal. Antiochus smirked. A spell, perhaps, from your mother, the witch? Potema continued to smile. Her brother was cleverer than she thought. Did you know that charm spells, even powerful ones, only last so long? Of course you didn't. You never were one for magic. Let me tell you, a generous salary is a stronger motivation for keeping a servant in the long run, sister. Antiochus took out his own sheet of paper. Now I have a choice for you. What is that? said Potema, her smile faltering. It looks like nonsense, but if you know what you're looking for, it's very clear. It's a practice sheet, your handwriting attempting to look like my handwriting. It's a good gift you have. I wonder if you haven't done this before, imitating another person's handwriting. I understand a letter was found from your husband's dead wife, saying that his first son was a bastard. I wonder if you wrote that letter. I wonder if I showed this evidence of your gift to your husband whether he would believe you wrote that letter. In the future, dear Wolf Queen, don't lay the same trap twice. Potema shook her head, furious, unable to speak. Give me your forgery and go take a walk in the rain. And then, later today, unhatch whatever other plots you have to keep me from the throne. Antiochus fixed his eyes on Potemas. I will be Emperor, Wolf Queen. Now go. Potema handed her brother the letter and left the room. For a few moments, out in the hallway, she said nothing. She merely glared at the slivers of rainwater dripping down the marble wall from a tiny, unseen crack. Yes, you will, brother, she said but not for very long. Oh, a pickaxe. That's not really what I wanted. But I don't want to spam Mage Light either. Although those guys aren't uh, notice activated, I have to get close enough to the fort to aggravate them, so I don't have to worry, I can spam Mage Light. There's usually an animal over here, either a saber cat or a wolf which I'm looking for. There's a couple of Tundra Cottons. Ah, damn, just a wolf. But we can soul trap it at least. Come here, boss. Come on home, skillet. Yeah. hey yo, Conjuration to 71. Now, let me see if that one worked properly. Nope. <clears throat> they aren't stacking, and it didn't actually change to a filled soul gem. But, say la vie. I'll just have to keep track of it and combat the glitch with the console, like I've been doing. I don't think there's typically anything else of note back here. I'm checking out these pools of water and these rocks, and I'm not finding anything. Nothing noteworthy at the actual fort, either. Ooh, a fox. 
Might as well get his pelt. Iron should well. I have over a thousand. I was gonna switch to iron, but I don't really need to worry, do I? Well, good. I saw him running earlier. So we'll take his pelt and keep on moving around the fort. Until you see this drainage. Now, don't worry too much about what's in the water. Just note that this is an alternate entrance to the fort. One that bypasses all the combat. Useful in a Dark Brotherhood quest much later in the game. But I will be storming the front entrance because, naturally, I want that combat. I want to raise my skills with it. <clears throat> I don't believe I have any black soul gems, so I'll just have to make my way around. I can keep spamming mage light, there's no reason to save my magicka. Except that I'll be wanting to heal. Oh, I got too close. So they're hostile now, but, you know, that's not a big deal. I was ready to start fighting anyway. Sure, have mercy on you! <laughs> oh, so fast! Alright, we got a melee marauder here. I guess I'll kill him first. <laughs> I'd rather fight the archers, but this guy doesn't seem to want to leave me alone. Two-handed 76, that's good. I just need to make, kind of make sure I stay in motion so that the archers can't tag me. Oh. At least one of the archers is definitely a marauder. He's hitting hard when he hits. Alright, melee marauder is down. Let's search him. Steel plate armor, inferior to my Nordic carved. Steel plate helmet. It keeps they keep giving steel plate air helmets arrows that are supposed to indicate they're the best thing you have, but Nordic carved is obviously better. Let's heal up and let's go after the archer. Or archers. Alright, see that one that's out here with me? Running so damn fast? Let's deal with him first. I'm trying to get close enough to convince him to use his dagger. Second Marauder Archer on the wall. I don't think I'm going to finish this fight. Nope. I just, I needed to get to him sooner. And convince him to get his dagger out sooner. There, now I'm going to be okay. down. Search him. Elven bow, that's pretty good, but I already have ebony, which you should know by now is better. Let's do what healing I can. There's yet another one out here on ground level with me. Oh, two. A thug and a highwayman. Well, let's get the highwayman. Let's... 
He's stronger. And two highwaymen and a dog. And I need to isolate them from each other a little better than that. Maybe if I go after this one. Get over here. Stop running away. Okay, we can loot him and run away. Oh shit. Thought I could get away, but Thug is pretty weak, so I should be able to eliminate him now that he's over here and isolated. I hope so anyway. It's particularly if I close and I can make it very sad. Archers, even strong ones, are pretty much done once you force them to, once you close the gap and force them to switch to their daggers. This one... Fully looted, and he's the first one weak enough to reanimate. I just keep track of that thug force. Everyone else is too strong. And we're down to one. It's a highwayman, so I should be able to get him without too much trouble. Heavy armor to 59. That's good. Get over here. Two-handed to 77. And a level up. I don't want to use it, of course. I want to heal. And get the restoration experience that comes with that. But I will gladly murder the shit out of her. Take all her stuff. I want to wait and get as much restoration XP as possible by healing. And then I'll level up and raise the piddly little thug and give him the treatment. Then it's probably time for an offload considering how much stuff I'm carrying. because restoration levels painfully slowly. If we can get it to 65 before we get to the college winter hold, then it gets easy because you can cast Circle of Protection anywhere, anytime, kind of like Muffle and uh, Mage Light. Okay, now we'll level up. Restoration went to 35. That point goes to stamina, and I hoard the perk, but we are at level 50. That's neat. We'll reanimate corpse, we can raise this dude. I don't think he raised his full health. But it doesn't really matter. As long as I can get at least four hits. He's down. Now let's do one more thing outside, then we'll offload and enter the gate. You'll notice there's a bandit here in the cage. You can usually reach him by jumping. There he is. Barely. Barely, barely. Come on. Ah, oh, shoot. Just gotta time it right, because the window is small. There we go. Seven gold, hide armor, fur shoes, steel sword. And... Being a piddly little level one... We'll give him the treatment, because he... Should end up outside the cage. They usually do. Well, not him, I guess.
There he is. That's what I wanted. Little bit of translocation. Punch, 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 and you picked a bad time to get lost, friend. Kill. And now we'll go Thank to White you. Run to offload. As our carry weight's up to 333. So it's time. your fancy magic someplace else. Stop by old, reliable, 24-hour Elrin deer. Get rid of most of this stuff. What are you hunting? Never mind. I don't want to know. Elven bow, imperial bow, iron dagger, iron sword, long bow, orcish bow, two orcish dagger, two steel dagger, and a steel sword. Two fur armor, two fur bracers, two fur shoes, two hide armor, two hide boots, hide shield, iron boots, leather armor, leather boots, steel plate armor, and he actually can't afford a steel plate helmet. But we can Thank sell him wine. And we can go wait until daytime. Not even just to avoid vampires, although that's why we'll wait inside. But, because we need to wait for the door to, the shops to open. In here, we will drop all ingredients, save those large antlers, which need to go upstairs. I will drop my... Now, you know what? I'll just hold on to my petty soul gems. I think I can avoid triggering the glitch as long as I never shift them anywhere in my inventory. So, amethyst, and deer hide, and emerald, and fox pelt, and garnets, and iron ore, and a ruby, and a wolf pelt all go in there. check on Lucia's chest. It's still empty. Dragon scales are one of the very last things that go in here, but they do. Large antlers go in here, along with nothing. Now, I have some stolen stuff. Should be pretty easy to separate it out just by looking at tags, because there's not that much of it. We stole that. We stole those. We stole these potions. We stole all three of these books. And that's it. So all I need, actually, is somebody who can afford a steel plate helmet. Honest. So we can wait till daytime and just visit Adrian on our way out of town. That'll be easy. to exploring the fort. Now this is getting long enough that I think I'm gonna separate out the crafting session and do it as an entirely separate video. After exploring Fort Greymore before moving along. Just cause Fort Greymore is probably the biggest location we've been to in a while. Probably, maybe, since Bleak Falls Barrow. Yeah, I think it is. Come to chat with an old woman, hmm? You're, You're someone who can... Hmm, blades, helmets, pretty much anything... I simply wish to sell you a steel plate helmet and be on my Don't way. Don't forget to check... 
Fort Graymore. Let's fast travel back. Side the sh In we go. Now, first things first, there's usually one bandit who's separated from his posse and doesn't join the fight. He likes to hide in the back. So, and yeah, I see him up there. So let's go to the back tower and kill the last bandit. And then the exterior will be finished. Come on, boy. Never should have come. A marauder <laughs> with a big ass battle axe. Not quite good enough, are you? Bastard! You won't get Skyrim alive! Damn. He murdered the shit out of me. <laughs> Picked a bad time to get lost. Gotta be more careful. Can't just try to take him in a straight line. At least not out the gate. That's all you've got. Stairs sometimes seem confusing to AI. He can get in a few free hits there. By Ismir. You'll pay for that? You won't leave Skyrim alive! Go ahead, try and fight. Back. Got it. Victory is yours. I okay, good. Oh, yeah, he just had a steel battle axe, so that was pretty much all talent. But to be fair, he probably has some perks assigned to two handed and the relevant items. Which I don't. Even before I have my end game gear. You'll notice a dramatic increase in my effectiveness when two-handed and heavy armor are finally maxed and I switch to the skills I'm perking. Anyway, now everybody's dead. So now we can properly explore the fort. Starting here at the front entrance, let's explore the courtyard and then head up onto the walls. In the courtyard, you notice an entrance to the second zone. There are two interior zones, the Fort Greymore Prison. Here, just an iron arrow, but I'll grab it. Why not? Not really anything over here. This changes once the Imperials take over. And now I can switch to Mage Light. A barrel to search for cabbage. Okay. There's the main entrance to the main zone. Which is probably the one I'll use, but. I will probably clear the prison first. Not much over here. I can pick up a saw off the ground. There's another route up onto the wall. Still more ways to access the wall, but back here by the forge. Really nothing useful, just a bucket. Back here, nothing, nothing, nothing. A bucket, a shovel. Come on, let's have something good. There we have a chest. That's something, at least. Steel greatsword, iron ingot, studded imperial armor. Well, nothing great, but... Bottle of mead in the horse trough. Probably to cool. And we're back to the gate, so now let's hop up onto the wall and see what we can find there. So, starting with this cage as my reference, I'm going to go clockwise all the way around the top of the fort. So here we have a second entrance to the prison. We go up this tower. There's nothing up at the top, but there is an alternate stairway down where you can find a coin purse, a dagger, a potion, and a barrel of ingredients, not food. 
over here, there's a third entrance to the main zone. That one takes you straight to the captain's quarters, or commander's quarters. Up on the back tower, where this guy was hiding. A food barrel, a flute, some mead, a couple of coins that are supposed to be on the table but seem to have fallen through. Can take the longbow and arrows off of that dummy. <coughs> Continuing into this tower, there's another chest. Garnet, four lockpicks, 47 gold, and hey yo, an amulet of Kinnereth. Unbelievable, something we need. I needed two of those, so with this one, the number's down to one. Excellent. Let's go over here now. Food sack, food barrel. St there's another staircase down into the courtyard. And actually, we need to take it because there's an interruption in the wall there. Let's get back on top as soon as we can to continue our circuit. Nothing in this palisade. And I think we've made it all the way around. So, let me check my carry weight. I'm doing fine for now. And let's head into the prison. I'm gonna put Mage Light away for now. There are enemies in here that are hostile regardless of whether you get close. Oh, there's a bear trap right there that I should have noticed, probably. And I saw a guy right here on the stairs. <laughs> One hand and shield marauder. Well, marauders are tough to take in a straight fight for me at this point, so I need to be careful. You think you can take me? Still haven't seen the fifth rank of bandit. Never seen a plunderer. Because bandit, bandit outlaw, bandit thug, bandit highwayman, bandit plunderer. And Bandit Marauder. Sure, I've got to see on you. So this is as strong as bandits get, which is somewhat comforting. The dragons are still going to get substantially stronger than they are now. But of course, bandits are the weakest class of enemies in the game, which is kind of why I tend to explore bandits strong ones before I do anything else. We got a rank of heavy armor and a rank of two-handed. Not bad. He doesn't have anything that interests me. But I do want to take this break to heal. And check on my carry weight. Went up to 279 with his gear. Let's clear out this zone. This ladder leads up to that second entrance I showed you. Some food and clutter and hide boots over here. There's another entrance to the main door, not the one the tank. I'll probably just head outside again and take the main door. Wooden bowl, rock warbler egg, iron dagger, coin purse, two bowls, another iron dagger, and some wine. Now this room is almost cleared out, but we have an apprentice locked door. It looks like it's actually a cell. I have six breakable picks, so... Let's run up the lock picking experience. Three, two, one, <clears throat> and done. And now we'll open the door. Damn, maybe not. I always get overly cocky on apprentice locks and it always bites me in the ass. I say always, it's happened twice. That's still. We'll quick save after breakage this time, just so we don't have to do it again. Now let's get this bastard open. There we go. In here we've got charred skeever hide, clutter, and a deceased 
hunter. Let's see what he's carrying. Loot him down. Carry weight's up to 306. Let's scope out the next bandit and maybe... It may already be due for another offload. There are two more bandits in the basement. If I recall, there's one... There's another melee bandit and another... And a caster. And we run into them... I think together, but you can separate them. Oh, we'll find out soon enough. Uh, regardless, here we go. What? Hunter is too powerful for reanimate corpse. Well, there you go. Well, let's just creep down toward the prison then. This is thankfully a small zone. Down these stairs and find a bunch of prisoner gear on the shelves. I'm up to 313. Bed rolls, unlocked door, basket, and another hunter. Well, what's this one have? Nothing useful, but some stuff that's valuable. He is also too powerful for reanimate corpse. My carry weight's up to 334. So, let's just keep searching cells and leave the bandits alone. Because they are down at the end of the hall together, like I thought. Here's a novice lock. So let's break three picks and then open it. Two. One. And zero. Let's open this up. Head inside. High elf. Boots and clothes. That cell's unlocked and empty. Uh, as you can see, we got two bandits here. But apparently, because I'm in such deep darkness, they can't see me. As long as I stay nice and still. Is someone there? What I wanted was to unlock this door, expert locked. Let's do that. Might be tough, but it's doable. They can see even at 55 lock picking, the, the band for an expert lock is pretty darn small. But there, it's open. Lock picking to 56. I know I heard something. There's just a bucket in there. I want to grab that, I want to give the High Elf the treatment, then I want to offload, then I want to come huh? back and kill these guys. That's my planned order of operations. Hey, sneak to 89. It's fun. Must be my imagination. Yep, must be. Retire someday. There'd be someone there. Alright, got my bucket. Settle down, dudes. I was sure I heard something. Just cleaning out the cleaning the junk out of your prison cells. <laughs> Two threes. What was he thinking? Thought never saw me pull that ace out of my boot. All right. I don't know if we're close enough that this will be a problem or not. Seems we are just close enough for this to be an issue. Oh, maybe we're okay. Or 
because now they can see me. But let's just run out of here and offload. And we'll come back and fight them and clear the place out. Or keep clearing. It may well take another trip or two. Because it's big. And mainly because there are a lot of bandits to kill in the main zone. And we can be spamming Mage Light now. That's something. Got some big pieces out here. I don't. Take a look. Okay, they haven't reset, so going to Elrendir would be useless, but let's sell her. Hunting bow, daggers, longbows, orcish dagger, orcish sword, steel battle axe, steel greatsword, banded iron shield, stupid light armor, decent steel armor. Don't forget to check inside the shop if you need anything. And then there's a good bit of stuff I need to offload. Let's do that on our way up to Bellathor's. That seems more efficient to me. Papa. I have found some ingredients. Not many, but a few. I'm holding on to my filled soul gems. Let's go to the smithing cupboard. What do I have for here? A garnet, an ice wolf pelt, an iron ingot, saber cat pelt. What do I have sitting in here? Ebony sword, dwarven shield, elven shield, glass armor, and that scaled everything else. Looks so sad. I feel sorry for it. Shouldn't have anything stolen anymore. And I don't think I have anything from here either. I think that's it. Now it's just stuff to sell. Ah, no! I found that amulet of Kinnereth. That goes in here. I knew I had a reason to come up here. And everything else is just vendor trash. Yes. Yes. Unless Lucia's chest is restocked, which it has not. Something, Papa? Well met, Kinsman. I work for Bellathor. All right, Everything. Bellathor, what you got oh, going on? This and a bit of that. hey -o, Amulet of Zenithar. That's the last one I need. I can take that one off the list. Debella, Kinnereth, Mara, Talos, and R.K. What about in here? Nothing. But... That's okay, because I'm happy with the Amulet of Xenathar, to be sure. Better check on Arcadia too while I'm here. Don't mean to be rude, but I'm too busy to talk right now. Take a good look around. I'm sure you'll find what you're what do you need? So you're interested in my potions and ingredients? What does she have? She has nothing. Come back anytime. Well, that was if you easy. Need a remedy. Well met, Traveler. Just gotta drop off my new amulet of Zenithar. Go cast your fancy magic someplace. And then fast travel back to Fort Greymore. I used to be an adventurer like you. Your sword and your shield. <clears throat> this video is getting long as it is. I may have to split it into three parts. 
Greymore exterior and prison. Separate video for the main zone. And then a separate video for another big crafting session. We'll see. I think I've been going about an hour already. Maybe even more. Yeah, it's more like an hour and a half. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure I have time to finish. So, what I will do now is kill those last two bandits in the prison, finish clearing it out, then when that's done, I'll call it a video, next time we'll clear the main zone, and depending on time, I may be, still be able to keep it to two and just do the crafting session then. Or I may... <laughs> Goddamn bear trap. <laughs> or I may have to split it into three. We'll see. Oh, well, might as well get a little bit of healing experience. Alright. The idea is to separate these guys. Oh, look at that. Found you. That was easy. <laughs> Not so fast. Good, I didn't want to fight them together, but they separated on their own. I didn't even have to finagle. But if you do run into them together at the bottom of the zone like that, it's pretty easy to separate them because the caster, for whatever reason, is really reluctant to leave this little nook. So you can typically lure this fellow out here, and his buddy will say where he is. Okay. All that chatting done. Let's finish murdering this guy. Good. He's gone. He's got nothing particularly good. So let's heal up and heal his buddy. sword, go forth and murder a very powerful caster. Is someone there? As long as we can get up on him, our magic resistance got him. Let's see what he drops. Nothing terribly useful, although we did get some LZ -er in the bargain. So, let's look over here. A salt pile, an iron dagger, a bucket, a clothes iron, and a dead troll. Oh, and two lockpicks. Now, I think I had determined that trolls are too powerful to be a corpse. A, root, a little wooden chest. Gold and a scroll of wisdom. I'm glad we have some picks because we got a master lock to deal with here. Perfect. Nothing inside the cage except a little bit of potions. I phrased that incorrectly. I should have a few potions. Let me just get the level on the troll right quick. Then I'll know. Okay, yeah, trolls are level 14. That's too powerful. Reanimate corpse only goes up to level 9. So let me head out to the main entrance, and then we'll call it a video, because this has been going a while.
So here's the main entrance to Fort Greymore. I'm going to leave it here because this has been going pretty long. So next time, we'll tackle the main zone and then, time permitting, we'll do a crafting session. Until then, this has been Let's Play Skyrim. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.